News Channel 5 Network. This is Morning Line with Nick Barris. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Morning Line. Nick Barris here with you on a Wednesday. A good topic on hand where I'm going to invite you all to join in the conversation. I'm kind of fearing some of the opinions I may hear this morning because if you watch along today, you'll get a pretty good sense about how I feel about this issue, though I won't voice that as strongly as I think my guests will this morning. As we're discussing the concept of child marriage in the state of Tennessee, how old you can or cannot be to get married, male or female or otherwise. And there is legislation right now that's making its way through the Capitol, but, you know, it's hit some stumbling blocks along the way. A lot of diverse opinions about it. And we're going to talk about the very latest where we're at. We'll open up the phone lines at 737-7587 to talk this morning with uh, our two guests who um, are sponsors of this, Representative Darren Jernigan and Senator Jeff Yarbrough. Thanks, gentlemen, for coming on. Thanks. Appreciate it. You guys were on talking about this, I think, just last week on Open Line. You were saying it's deja vu. <laughs> Probably your time. Well, but things have changed a bit. And let's just say real quickly now, um, first and foremost, for folks maybe coming around this issue for the first time today, what was it that spurred you to pursue this legislation? What, what did you discover yeah. about law? Just real quick background. I mean, I think... I think we, like many people in Tennessee, didn't know that this was legal. What's legal? That, that it was legal for someone under 18 to get married in Tennessee. But under the current law, a 16 or 17 year old can be married to an adult or another minor, but an adult with no age limit, uh, just with parental consent. And any child under the age of 16 can be married as long as they have the approval of a judge or county official. And it turns out that that's happened about 2,000 times since the year 2000. And we think that that Tennessee needs to get out of the child marriage business. And so uh, most 85% of these marriages are between an underage girl and an adult male. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are doing something that ends up in this world the world that we live in being very dangerous and very uh, harmful to women uh, and to or, to or to men that get married this age. They're so much more likely to drop out of high school. They're less likely to go to college. They're more likely to be victims of violence. They're more likely to have bad health issues, uh, lower you know, lifetime earnings. And so we want to, uh, to put an end to that. And you know, I mean, I think if you go back in time, all of us have ancestors, or a lot of us have oh, ancestors we'll that got married. Today. We're going to have someone calling in at today a young saying, age. I got married at 14 and I'm still married today. We're going to get some of those. <laughs> and, and some of them have been successful marriages, right? Oh, without question. And I think if you go back in a lot of our histories, that would be the case. <laughs> but we live in a, in, at a time when that, that is, it is far rarer. And these aren't high school sweethearts getting married. Mm -hmm. These are underage girls that are being married to adult men. And I don't think the, anybody in the state of Tennessee wants our laws being used to marry, which has happened, marry a 14-year-old girl to her 47-year-old rapist. Well, That's there, something that happened that, in Tennessee. There is a judge who's actually lucid, and I know there's plenty of judges that aren't lucid, unfortunately, that would actually approve a marriage like that? I would certainly hope not. Okay, so, but I mean, has it really happened? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, you said 2,000 times since the year 2000. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily at 14 or 12. That could have been a 16 or 17-year-old. So, so the vast majority of these are 16-year-olds that are getting married uh, or 17-year-olds. But there are numerous exceptions where that, where the, the judicial approval has been used for people under 16. And so, uh, and it doesn't just have to be judges under our laws. It can just be elected County county mayors who can sign yeah, off on a marriage other. like that. Okay, and it, the small campaign contribution. And see, all there, of a sudden. There you go. And okay. you said also parental approval has to be in connection with yes. this public official, and there are parents out there that. And what parent would sign off on a 12-year-old marrying an adult male? I mean, I mean, what, it's again. Yeah. There's a lot of lousy parents out there. All right, so who on earth would do something so like that? So parental rights is one that comes up quite a bit, and I've, I've said uh, before, if, if parents make great decisions, we wouldn't have a Department of Children's <laughs> Services. That's right, of course. Uh, they do, but uh, it really gets to a point that there are parents out there that are addicted, they're abusive, 
Uh, they're not doing what's the best interest of the child. It's a well known uh, that the state of Tennessee and, and Hawk versus Hawk and the Supreme Court, that the state can step in to protect the minor uh, and from health and harm. Mm -hmm. That's what they do when you have laws that are constitutional and statutory, like uh, drinking, smoking, uh, the oh, you sure. can't buy a gun, can't get a tattoo. Just recently in the legislature, we said if you're under 16, you can't use a tanning bed. Yeah. So we come in and step in for, for, for those reasons. And so it's not that uh, you're just taking away parental rights, we're just keeping safety uh, for the child. All right, let's get to where we stand now. Now, you both are Democrats. Of course, we know this is a Republican legislature, so you have to have support from them as well. Mm. And um, it was moving its way. Then it appeared that it might be dead. Now it's got an amendment that was sent back to committee. Talk a little bit about the amendment and the status of the bill as we sit here today. The amendment would be what? Allowing, in some instances, an underage individual well, that's 17, that would be allowed? Correct. So it's 18, the, the bill is 18. And 17 is the exception. Okay. So if they're 17, they get both parents to sign off. Then they go to a judicial review. There's certain, there's, gosh, there's probably 10, 15 provisions in there that a judge needs to look at before uh, issuing a waiver. But emancipation is also in there to where the child is, uh, has the rights and responsibilities as an adult. So then there's a 15 day waiting period so they can make a decision. Are they being pressured in this marriage? If mm -hmm. they are, they can as an adult say, I don't wanna do this. So I think there are a lot of people who have this notion of what, just sort of what I mentioned, the high school sweetheart scenario mm -hmm. and want to make provision for that. Mm -hmm. What the amendment does is basically allow that, but with a kind of what I, I group in kind of three protections. One, it makes sure that the minor <coughs> has a choice both to get in and to get out. And so there's an emancipation so that they lose the, the disabilities of being a child. Mm -hmm. So most children can't enter into a contract. And so if they get married, they literally can't enter into a binding lawyer with a, a binding contract with a lawyer to get divorced. <laughs> and so this preserves some real choice both to get into the, the, the marriage and to get out. Second, it makes sure that we're not do blessing any illegal relationships. So there's a criminal background check to make sure that we're not marrying someone to a, a sex offender or someone with a, a history of domestic violence. We're not, <laughs> and, and it doesn't allow uh, marriages that would be in violation of Tennessee statutory rape law. And so if a 17 year old seeks judicial approval to marry a 57 year old, the, that would not be permissible under the amendment. And then the third thing it does is it makes the, sure that there's a, a genuine and meaningful review by a court to ensure that, uh, the, that the, the minor is going to have some maturity and self-sufficiency so that, uh, you know, most children are dependent upon their parents. And if the marriage just moves that dependency to the, the new husband, then you put that minor in a place where they may not have a way to escape. Yeah, they can, and be, so, they can be caught. Yeah. So I've got a 16-year-old daughter. Okay. She can't clean her room. <laughs> it seems every day. You know, it's, it's, so to, to, to be able to say, we're going to make this long-term, lifetime decision for you. Mm -hmm. Because teenagers have a really tough time uh, between short-term benefits and long-term cost yeah. and, and weighing those two. And so they, they jump into something that, and, and end up with underage, 70% in the divorce. Yeah. So then they're at a point where I've heard cases to where you've got a couple of children, you're divorced, you're bankrupt, and now you're on government assistance from Section 8 housing to food stamps and unemployment. That, it, this bill only strengthens the institution of marriage when both parties go into the, a, a social contract on equal footing under the equal protection of the law. All right, listen, let's take a break, and we've okay. got some folks who have thoughts on this, and uh, we're going to talk about maybe, from your perspective, what some of the objections are, and there are clearly some, or it would have sailed through. There are some folks that have some problems with this, and we'd like to hear your thoughts as well. The number 737-7587 about uh, this bill, which would ban child marriage, except in certain circumstances, as you just heard. We'll be back with more. Your calls and our guests right after this. All right.